Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 12. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. Jeremiah, chapter 12. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are they all happy that deal very treacherously? You know, basically Jeremiah is saying, how come all these wicked people are prospering they're doing really great and uh, they're all happy when they do all their evil stuff verse 2 thou hast planted them yea they have taken root they grow yea they bring forth fruit thou art near in their mouth thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins that reminds me of something Jesus said. You know, they're, uh, Jesus was speaking about them in Matthew 15 and verse 8. It says, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Mark 7 and verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. As it is written, The people, this people, honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Oh, Jeremiah 12, 2. Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken root, they grow, yea, they bring forth fruit evil fruit that is thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins now if you know anything about horses you could put a bit in its mouth and the reins are what goes back that what the rider of the horse holds uh, you can pull it to the right or you can pull it to the left and if, whichever way you turn the horse's head it's that's the way it's gonna go those are the reins. Verse 3. But thou, O Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried mine heart toward me. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. That's right. Prepare them, the evil ones, for the day of slaughter. How long shall the land mourn, and the herbs of every field wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein? The beasts are consumed, and the birds, because they said, He shall not see our last end. Verse 5. If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with the horses? Now, what Jeremiah is saying here, if you're kind of in a battle and you're running with the infantry, you know, the footmen, uh, the soldiers that are on foot, and they wearied you or made you tired, uh, how are you going to contend with the, uh, the cavalry, those with horses? I mean, if you can't even keep up with the horsemen, uh, the footmen, you're, you're in big trouble when it comes to the horses, the cavalry, right? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trustest, they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? Now, Jordan's the river. He could be talking about a swelling of the Jordan River with water. But sometimes, 
Water is referred to as people, a flood. So there could be a double meaning there. That's the thing about English. A lot of English words have double meanings and triple meanings. One of the first puns I learned when I was a kid, I was in elementary school, was, uh, you know, why did the golfer, you know, like Tiger Woods, why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? Gee, Bob, I don't know. Why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? In case he got a hole in one. You know, yeah, I know it's not funny, but, you know, for a seven-year-old, yeah. But, um, you know, a lot of words have double and triple meanings. That's what uh, makes the Bible interesting. Digging and finding out what is what. Verse 6. For even thy brethren and the house of thy father, even they have dealt treacherously with thee. Yea, they have called a multitude after thee. Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto thee. Oh yeah, they're going to talk nice to you, but don't believe them because they're treacherous. You know, they're going to betray you. Verse 7, I have forsaken mine house. I have left mine heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemies. What does that mean, I have left mine heritage? Well, in Psalms 135 and verse 12, and gave their land for an heritage, an heritage unto Israel, his people. Now, according to tradition, Jeremiah left, um, left the land of Israel, briefly went into Egypt with the king's daughters, and then ended up in Ireland. I don't know how true that is, but it wouldn't surprise me. So, in Psalms 127 and verse 3, we read, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. And what did the 70s generation do, start doing? Uh... They listened to the news and to the media and said, you know, children are a burden. Let's, let's abort them. They're really not children, you know, until they're almost born. Let's abort them. And that's, I think it was 1973, the men in black dresses that dares to call themselves the Supreme Court said, abortion is legal. But the Bible says children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. And you know all these people that are in the nursing homes getting their uh, shots against their will? They're the generation that aborted their children. The Bible declares that the children would meet the enemy at the gate. But guess what? There are no children to meet the enemy at the gate because they aborted them all. Yep, Psalms 127, verse 3, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. You know, the Bible says, have children, uh, be fruitful and multiply. Satan says, have an abortions, get rid of them all. They're a burden. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they, the children, but they shall speak with the enemies 
in the gate. Yeah. The children will meet the enemies in the gate. Well, there are no children to meet the enemies in the gate because they were all aborted. Sad. I estimate that there was about, well, there was between 2 and 3 million children aborted every year in the United States from, oh, let's say 1974 on. Do the math. You know, do the math. It's got to be probably about 85 million. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah. Verse 12, chapter 12, verse 7. I have forsaken mine house. I have left mine heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemies. Mine heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It crieth out against me. Therefore have I hated it. Mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. Oh boy, here we go. Verse 10. Many pastors. P-A-S-T-O-R-S. -S, you know, ministers. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. So who are these pastors that destroy the vineyard? Uh... What's a vineyard? Well, let the King James Bible explain or interpret the King James Bible. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, of which I did a commentary on the entire book of Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah is one of the most important books in the Bible, in my opinion. I mean, it is so rich in prophecy. And... Jesus quoted the book of Isaiah probably more than any other book in the Bible. Isaiah is quoted more in the New Testament than any other book that I know of. I mean, I could be wrong about that, but I don't think so. Isaiah 5, verse 1. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. A song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it, and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a winepress therein, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof. Now what happens when you take away the, the fence? Uh, wild animals get in there and they eat up your crops, right? You know, deer just love gardens. They just love that stuff, right? I will take away the hedge thereof and it shall be eaten up and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down, and I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. Verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is... The house of Israel. 
Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. Let's go back to Jeremiah. Chapter 12, verse 10. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. Oh, yeah. Turn on TBN. Turn on the 700 Club. You'll be, you'll be watching front row seat. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate, and being desolate, it mourneth unto me. The whole land is made desolate, because no man layeth it to heart. The spoilers are come upon all high places through the wilderness. For the sword of the Lord shall devour from the one end of the land, even to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. They have sown wheat, but they shall reap thorns. Huh, wheat. Huh. What's this thing about wheat? Didn't Jesus say he was the bread of life? What do you make bread out of? Well, you can make bread out of barley. You can make bread out of corn. You can make bread out of rye. But most Americans eat wheat, wheat bread. At least everybody that I know. And what about the wheat, the parable of the wheat and the tares? Does that, uh, you know, fit in here somewhere? Probably. They have sown wheat, but they shall reap thorns. They have put themselves to pain, but shall not profit. And they shall be ashamed of your revenues because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord against all mine evil neighbors that touch the inheritance which I caused my people Israel to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. And it shall come to pass, after that I have plucked them out, I will return and have compassion on them and bring them again, every man to his heritage and every man to his land. Now, remember something. When Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians came, they took Israel to Babylon into captivity for 70 years. And then along came the Persians who conquered the Babylonians, Cyrus and Dar Dar Darius, Darius, and they allowed Israel to return. Just like, just like Jeremiah said. I think it was Jeremiah. Pretty sure. 70 years. So, verse 15 here was fulfilled. All right, verse 16. And it shall come to pass, if they will diligently learn the ways of my people, to swear by my name, the Lord liveth as they taught my people to swear by Baal. Oh, yeah. See, you want to swear by the devil or do you want to swear by the Lord? And it shall come to pass if they will diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name. The Lord liveth as they taught my people to swear by Baal. Then shall they be built in the midst of my people. But if they will not obey... 
I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, saith the Lord. All righty. I think that concludes this chapter. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.